It's a big weekend coming up for the Swans. Brilliant news during the week. Alex Johnson has finally been ruled fit to play alongside Jordan Dawson. The inside midfielder, could he be the one that actually makes a difference for the Swans later on in the season? Big changes ahead. Gary Rowan, he's been named alongside Nick Newman. Tom Papley and Tom McCartan have made way. This is the Swans Blobs Swans Cast Extra, the number one Sydney Swans Fans Weekend Preview Podcast. In this week's episode, we'll preview the Swans Mark Rook Round 11 match against Carlton at the SEG on Friday night. We'll have a chat about Franklin and his record, also talk a little bit about Nick Newman, Gary Rowan, Ali Ali, where he's at, Harry Marsh and what he needs to do to maintain his spot, what we're looking forward to, matchups, key points, team changes, and we'll give our predictions and the weekend forecast. I'm Justin Mitchell, and with me is Stephen Park and Heather Quinlan, the Swans cast regulars. Stephen, a couple of changes. What do you think of them? Well, one I'm exceptionally happy with, Justin, Nick Newman, one of my favourite players. I actually really enjoy watching him play. I was devastated after he got dropped, even though he did have a shocker in one game. One game doesn't mean a lot. However, the other one, can't believe it. I yeah. am shocked, appalled, and annoyed that Tom Harley <laughs> would come out and say that Gary Rowan needs to go back to the reserves. He didn't even play, by the way. Play in the reserves and get some he touches. Play. He, he didn't, didn't play. play in the reserve. That's exactly right. But he didn't even get it. So he didn't play, didn't get a touch, yet he gets straight back in the side. Nick Newman gets dropped after one bad game early in the year. Gary Rowan gets chance after chance after chance. I am just <laughs> appalled. <laughs> Heather, I'm going to have to hear your side. Oh, well, I'm actually was just laughing there and just actually wondering, given that I was um, sort of casting aspersions about uh, about John Longmire last week and the fact that he may be on the outer because he hasn't uh, obviously received any medical reports from any of his um, medicos in the club, I'm now wondering whether um, Gary Rowan is John Longmire's love child because um, yeah. he... He, he does actually tend to get quite a good run. He's considered, I think, um, a first 22, and that's why he's just sort of been slotted straight back in. But, um, you know, I, I'm a huge a huge fan, but I have to say that I have been disappointed this year with his lack of form. And I'm just asking myself, what, in fact, has he done in training or elsewhere to convince um, the selectors that he needs to be back in the team this week? It's a, I, I, I have to say I'm a bit bamboozled. Well... In order to uh, kind of give you a bit of a feel about what uh, is happening on social media and reactions and whatnot, our post has basically come up with new minute, brilliant, papley, kind of like what's going on there. No one has actually said they're looking forward to Gary Rowan coming back in. It's just some comments on Newman, Alia, and papley kind of asking what's going on there. So, yeah, mm. look, um, the team management over the last couple of, uh, I guess, dozen or more rounds, even going back to last year, the last couple of weeks of last year, has just been a bit, it's been a bit weird, to be honest. It goes back to Justin. It goes back to the idea of Longmire and the selectors. Uh -oh. They're too sentimental. <laughs> I'm sorry, but they are. Kieran Jack plays poorly. He's still getting selected. He's starting to come into some form, but he's been a liability to the team this season so far. I'm sorry to say he has mm. been. His kicking has been atrocious. Gary yeah. Rowan has been doing <clears throat> very little all year. He's getting picked after being publicly denounced last week by Tom yeah. Harley and saying he needs to go back to the reserves and get some touches of the football and then straight back in after not playing reserves. Nick Newman and Alia Alia get dropped after yet one bad game each, being in the reserves going quite well, not getting a look in. All of a sudden, Nick Newman's back in. I just do not get it. What about um, Towers? Played one poor game all year, gets dropped. Well, he did play two poor games in a row, but uh, look, I'm going to jump in there because I think we need to get on to uh, some positive news. Otherwise, we don't really want to turn in this into a bit of a Swans bashing episode. <laughs> it is a preview after all. So top of the agenda, the reserve news. So really big news coming out of the week is that Alex Johnson has been passed fit to play and he and he is, I believe, named for the Neafel match on the weekend in the curtain raiser. Not too sure about Jordan Dawson, but the news was he would either play this weekend or the next weekend. Now, as everyone would know, Alex Johnson is that kind of uh, energetic, flashy defender, that sort of third tall that Marsh plays. And he was really good in the 2012 uh, Premiership. He's also pretty good in the finals then. But he's only played 45 games. The other one, Jordan Dawson, he's played one game. We spoke to Ted Richards last year. He said he's an exciting prospect. He's a, a 
big, strong half-forward flanker who can go in the mid and kick goals as well. So last year, he played 13 games in the Neafel. He probably would have won the league's MVP if he'd played about three more games. He is a really good talent and an exciting prospect as well. Heather, what do you make of those changes? Um, well, I'm really pleased to hear of it. In particular, I think with Alex Johnson, that uh, anybody who was a supporter in 2012 was just enthralled by you know this young, dynamic running energetic young man um, who was sort of you know intercepting balls and really just making some great plays um, up the back line and we were absolutely devastated when he suffered such a terrible series of knee injuries so really great that he's sort of making his way back but he has had some setbacks and it does make me a little bit concerned I mean it is good news of Obviously, that effectively playing res reserves this week but it does concern me that he, he just may not get enough time under his belt if he can stay healthy he may still may not have enough time to get you know really back into into the senior team I'm, I'm not sure how realistic that is for him this season what do, what do you think about that Stephen? I I love Alex Johnson I just don't see him getting back this year it's taken too long in the injury front up till now mm. um, basically I think this week was his opportunity if he'd have been Playing all year, this would have been the week that he would have actually had a chance and opportunity to come in. I just can't see it now. Leading into finals, him getting enough of a um, play behind his belt to actually lift to that stage. And sadly, if he doesn't get up to a standard, he may get delisted at the end of the year. It'd be about the fourth mm. time he'd been delisted, though. So I guess if he can actually get up to fitness and he can go through the rest of the season, the aim would be go through the season injury-free and just have a good pre-season. And that could possibly put him in the frame for next season if he doesn't get a chance through injuries and whatnot this season. Yeah, I reckon he'd be pretty nervous, Alex, if I was him. You know, He knows he's had a pretty good run with the Swans in many respects. And yeah, I, I think he'd be a bit on tenterhooks at the moment knowing that he's really got to, you know, I hope his body hold, holds together. Now, speaking of defenders, Mills, obviously, he uh, had a bit of the SCG curse the last week. Uh, first, we had Rampy last year breaking his arm, jumping a fence. Now we've got Mills tripping over a gutter and breaking his foot, the uh, fifth metatarsal. He's out for the season. Who replaces him for the rest of the season? We talked about this last week. I'm big on Alia coming in, but... Harry Marsh has maintained his spot, and he kind of did a little bit good at the weekend against Brisbane. The last 10 minutes, long my step was really good, but there was obviously some concerns about his performance throughout that match. Oh, I'm just, I'm supposed to be a, I'm supposed to be a supporter of Harry Marsh's because he's a West Australian lad and whatnot. Um, and I sort of, there are moments when I look at him and I think, yep, he really he reads the play well, and he um, has good instincts, and I like what he does, but they're there's not enough of them for me. I, I, I feel like he's just a bit, oh, he's a bit average. Um, I don't know whether I'm just not, I'm being too harsh there. So I'm happy to be overruled on that one. I agree, Heather. I think he's a bit wishy-washy myself. And yes, he does read the play well. But you've got to ask yourself, is he the third tall or is he playing as a medium-sized defender He's in between both, but he's not good at either. And that's no, where the problem sits. No, you're right. He's always been a particularly poor man-on-man -man defender. He's been a, a good uh, rebounding player because he has the pace and he can and he has a bit of a penetrative kick. Uh, but his disposal efficiency has never been particularly high. Heather? Yeah, I, yeah I'd agree with that. Yeah, I'd agree with that. And, um, yeah, God, and when we were talking about disposal efficiency, just going back to um, Kieran Jack, that's been appalling for him this year. Um, yeah. No, we're not talking about him, but I just whenever I think disposal efficiency, I cringe because um, um, poor old Kieran, he just keeps kicking it to the other team. I'm sorry, it doesn't matter who it is. It's just been happening yeah. too often. I know we're getting off topic, but, um, yeah, no, look, I'm really hoping that Harry Marsh um, really, you know, if he has a bit of consistency and gets a few games under his belt in a row, I'm hoping that he um, proves me wrong because, you know, he's obviously trying his heart out and you only you only want to see that, you know, from your, from your team's players. Yeah, absolutely. Look, there are a couple of options, obviously, running around in the Neafil at the moment. 
Colin O'Rourdon, he'd be very close to a debut. He might even debut against St Kilda next week. He's been playing that halfback flank, basically the same role Marsh and Mills have been playing. Uh, then you've got Robbie Fox, who played earlier this season more as a forward than a defender, but he spent most of his time as a defender, and he plays the exact same role. Uh, we've got Lear Lear, who's probably a bit tall to play that role, and he doesn't play small. He plays a bit taller than he is. Um and then you've got a couple of the younger players as well. And, and we might even give a, uh, a debut to uh, Maybaum or one of the other defenders, depending um, how things go. But look, yeah, the last note on Kieran Jack, his disposal efficiency, I think, is, an av- is averaging less than 50% this season. And he's still getting mm. about 16 possessions a game. So that's not, not quite good enough. But uh, look, usually we talk about team changes. I think we've uh, <laughs> done our piece on team changes. Justin, just before you move on. Yep. You've actually got to look at it. You're actually not thinking about the team changes on who replaces Mills. That's already decided, I think. You're actually talking about it, but I reckon it's done. I reckon, I reckon it's Zach Jones. Zach, yeah, Zach Jones played at least a half as a halfback flanker last week, a running halfback flanker, because Stoddard is actually replacing him, and Z- Jones has gone back. Mm. Yeah, it's a, it's a risky choice. If you choice, looked at it last week, that's what he did. Yeah, yeah it, 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 it is. It is. It is risky because Zach is, you know, he's a bit. He he can do anything, and it, I literally mean he can do anything. It can be good and it can be bad. Yeah, look, um, that we did see some good play last week, but some bad play. I think we really miss Mills's intercepting mark and his intercepting ability. That is clear as day, and I think we need a player who can do the same thing. And at the moment, Marsh is getting the gig, but Marsh has always proved to be pretty poor at the intercept work. But uh, mm. look. Let's move on to the preview of the match. So a little bit of history between Carlton and Sydney. Uh, last time they played, Franklin booted the 10 goals. He actually booted his contract score, 10-3, <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was brilliant on the night. Um, nice. He clinched the Coleman medal, I think, with his second last goal on the night, which was fantastic. I think he only won it by one or two. Uh, but Carlton actually won a second quarter, and it looked, it looked like it uh, might have been a bit of a boil over for a while. But there is a very interesting stat that I dug up that I think you might actually like. It's the fact that when Sydney have won by 60 plus points, they have scored 10 or more goals in their second halves versus Carlton. <laughs> That's a very random wow. stat, Justin. <laughs> Every time they've won by 60 plus in, in, since 2010, they have scored at least 10 or more goals. The last one they scored 15 and they scored 13 and 10, 10 and 10. Yeah, because I think that um, one of the hallmarks of Carlton really over the last few years is that they've gone into matches and they've um, tended to produce the odd really scintillating quarter and you think, wow, what are they going to do for this whole game? But they just have not been able to sustain it. And I'm not sure why that is because um, perhaps in some years they've been very, very young, but really this year they're not so young anymore. You know, they've got some players there who are... I think the average age of their team is 23, which is the same age as most other teams. So, I mean, yeah. I'm not quite sure why that is, but um, uh, I think that they just, uh, for some reason or other, maybe they've just lost the understanding of how to win, and that's why they tend to cave in a bit in the second half. That's my sort of theory anyway. I agree with you, Heather. The biggest issue with them also is you look at their older players, rank any of them, and are any of them even b graders? Oh, yeah, yeah, you could say, um, if, well, obviously Murphy, he's not quite a leader. I wouldn't say he's a leader anymore, but um, Simpson as well. Simpson's probably their most important player. I think so, but Simpson's they have got a poor... Their most important... But how many... I would say they've got the worst list in the AFL at the moment, and that Agreed. would be reflected That would be reflected by the number 18 position on the ladder. That's right. But you've also got to look at it. How many injuries have they had to their key players this year? Mark Murphy hasn't played that many games. Mm. Yeah, but, Lewenberger yeah. hasn't played that many games. Every team has those injuries. I, I agree with Heather. Like their list is easily the worst in the AFL, and they have zero depth at all. The players they are bringing through are as green as they get. They're literally green under the collar. Yeah, yeah. And the trouble is, they're green, but they're not young either. No, no, they've That's topped up. Issue. They've topped up mm. and they've gone the complete wrong route. Um, some other bits from the last time you played them. 
Uh, we kicked 15 goals to three in the second half. Uh, Kennedy was massive with 30 disposals and eight clearances, and 18 of his disposals were contested, but obviously Franklin got the three votes with the 10 goals. Uh, now, Stephen, I think you'd really like this one. Carlton is one of Franklin's bunnies. He's actually got the second most goals of any side against Carlton. Uh, now, from 15 games, he's kicked 63 goals. He averages 17 disposals, 2.3 tackles, 4 inside 50s, 1.5 contested marks. Uh, that's pretty good, I would say. Yes, it's great, and I actually think that um, Carlton has been one of Buddy's <laughs> bunnies, but you know what I'm going to say? I actually don't think they will be this week. I'm actually not 100% convinced Buddy is travelling at 100%. He yeah. doesn't look great in he, the way he's moving around the ground and he's kicking. But while it's still accurate, it's got a, hasn't got a lot of penetration in it. I just wonder whether um, Bolton will do what I think he's going to do, and which is have Wietering and Liam Jones double-team him as soon as he gets anywhere near the 50, and he will actually struggle to actually run away from them a lot today. Well, here's or hoping Gary life. Rowan can chip in and exploit <laughs> that much up. hundred <laughs> percent agree with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'd just like to make the comment that I think that um, I've got, I'm inclined to agree with you, Stephen. I think that there could be um, a lingering injury problem. And I think this goes back to... Um, the last time I was on this wonderful podcast um, and we were talking about the very shock selection of one Lance Franklin that, that yep, just popped yep. up out of absolutely nowhere. One minute he's sort of injured and showing no signs of um, really a great recovery and the next minute he's in. I am I am always quite a little bit cynical about these matters and just wonder whether there has been that foot injury that they were talking about, the heel injury, but also potentially something else going on. And I suspect that, that something else is still going on. Um, so it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me. But I just think he just has that class that will see him. Um, you know, I think he's got a bit of class, and I, I just I can't I can't see Carlton really shutting him down completely. To be honest. Yeah, uh, agreed. I agree with you, Heather. I agree with you, Heather. And I think you are right. I think he will have a reasonable game, but I don't think he's going to come out and kick his eight or ten. I reckon maybe three or four. We'll pull mm. him up this week, and I reckon yep. he'll just go on his average. Yeah, could be right there. Could be right. So uh, let's move on to matchups. So Heather, you do have a matchup for us. Yes, I'm thinking that we may see the gun Patrick Cripps um, being haunted by George Hewitt this week. Now George does give away but weight on Cripps, so that is a bit of a um, a bit of a risk, but I think that's a likely possibility because George, being the good country boy that he is, tends to get given the rotten jobs um, by Longmire. And I think <laughs> yeah. he's going to be given I think this week he may get given the rotten job of having to mark, you know, one of the um, really probably um, Carlton's best player. In fact, I'd say certainly their best player, Patrick Cripps. He's a you know, he's a quality individual. He's I think he's playing twentieth in the player ratings at the moment. Now, I've also noticed that having a look at the head-to-head -head stats between the two of them, um, Cripps basically leads every statistical category against George, except disposal efficiency and goal assists, and that's pretty close anyway. So you would think, you would think that Cripps would absolutely. Um, really run all over the ground and do a lot of damage but I just think that oh Georgie he's a bit dogged and I think he just follows people around quietly and gets the job done so um, at the moment Cripps this season's been averaging Patrick Cripps has been averaging 8.1 clearances per game which is, is pretty good um, and I think that uh, that the Swans would like to really um, stop him having that kind of influence um, really around the ruck so I, I my sort of Match up here is that I'm, I'm taking, I'm putting all my supportive energies behind George Hewitt to really stop Cripps from um, getting hold of the ball too often and just sort of smother him a bit and just reduce his influence on the game. And Stephen, mate, your match up as well? Yep, uh, just um, I'd like to say, Heather, that's a great match up. And I reckon after what I saw last week with George Hewitt on Dane Zorko and the fact that the coach's votes gave him six at the second best player on last week's ground, I think that'll be a great matchup, and I reckon he will do the job on Paddy Cripps. But my matchup for this week is Ed Kerno versus Josh Kennedy. I just mm. have this feeling that Kerno is going to pick Kennedy up and have a run with roll with him. 
I don't think he's going to do very well, though. I actually think Kennedy, hopefully, will have a great game because he's been a bit on again, off again lately, and he's had, for the last four weeks, he's been on, off, on, off. And now I'm hoping this week he's back on and he actually has a dominant game. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Yeah, I, I like that too. I have to say that I thought that Kennedy played a bit better than um, what he was given credit for, I, I think, against Brisbane. But then again, nothing. he didn't have to do too much, really. Although, you know, it was difficult conditions. But, yeah, I, I, I really like the Kurnow brothers. Uh, I think they're quite dashing. But, um, yeah, I reckon <laughs> I reckon, <laughs> I reckon JPK is going to slaughter them this week. That's yep. a totally unbiased uh, opinion there. No, very unbiased. <laughs> Look, uh, for mine... I have Haywood lining up against Lockie Plowman. So Plowman's done uh, done pretty well in the past, uh, just as just as a general player for Carlton in defence. Uh, and I think it's a really good chance now for Haywood to really show what he can actually do against um, probably a lower quality defence. So I think he's in line to kick a bit of a bag in this match. Oh yeah, I love the idea of that. Now, do you reckon that the um, young Haywood and in fact perhaps even, you know, Ronk and what have you, are they going to need a rest fairly soon or do you reckon they're just hanging out for that bye weekend? Oh, definitely hanging out for the bye. I think if they can get through to the bye without injury and they can uh, regain a couple of players, uh, Sam Reid after the bye, um, Papley coming back in, even potentially McCartan if he gets another run, I think they're going to be set really well for a really good tilt in the second half of the season. The injury list itself is actually quite short compared to what it was at the start of the season. So we're just looking at uh, Mills, Tippett, uh, Naismith as the three long-termers, uh, and the rest of the injuries are pretty much reserve players. Mm. Tippett, yeah, I thought he retired. Pretty... Well, he's on the long-term, but he has retired, but he's on the long-term injury yeah. list. Yeah, right. We've been pretty lucky, realistically, with injuries. I know we've had a couple of long-term ones, but we've, we've held it together pretty well. Question I have around what you just said about McCartan, if he gets another run, why do you reckon they haven't tried him in the ruck over the last couple of weeks? I don't think he's actually played any uh, reserve in the ruck, but even then, he's only 193. So I don't think it'd be really advisable to throw that sort of 18-year-old up in the ruck. But no. then again, I mean, they put Gary Rowan in the ruck, so they might as well just put Papley or Ronk in the ruck for, for that, so if they're going to do that. They've put, yeah. That's right, they've put... Gary Rowan in the ruck. They've put Kennedy in the ruck. Harry yeah, Marsh was in the ruck news. last week. Yeah, oh, Robbie Fox. Yeah, Harry was Marsh. Yeah. Yeah. I just do not get this idea now that you put your best players into the ruck. No. Do you remember what Fair happened to... many moons ago with um with Adam Goods? He wrecked his knee, yes. and they said, yeah, they said, right. no, no more rucking for you, young man. Yeah, and he won another Brownlow. <laughs> Indeedy. <laughs> There's a couple of great points there. Look, let's move on to our key points of the match. So, Stephen, would you like to give us your key point of the match? I will, Justin, and I think it's going to be the contested possession. I think it's going to be significant in this game. With the Swans are averaging 150.9 per game and are sitting in the top six teams in the league, whereas Carlton, sadly, are sitting 15th with an average of 141.4. And although it doesn't seem like a lot, Nine or ten contested possessions a week extra is a fair significant amount. And I think our big-bodied midfield is just going to kill Carlton's undersized midfield. Yeah, good. Yeah, good, agree. Good, good key point. Very, very good key point. In fact, I almost went for the same key point, except that what I did choose in the end was... Um, I don't know whether anyone saw, but there was uh, an interesting little story popped up on afl.com.au about uh, free kicks around the league and who was getting them and who wasn't getting them. And this has been a topic of discussion um, ever since they started playing football. I think the supporters have talked about free kicks and who gets them and who doesn't. Um, it's interesting that the Swans' free kicks uh, four per game are 20 and then against the ones they give away are 22.2. So... It seems to me that they're probably giving away um, some frees that they don't need to. Um, Luke Parker, a wonderful, wonderful player that he is, has a tendency to give away some silly free kicks. Um, I'd really just like to see, in terms of uh, this week, I'd just like to see the Swans concentrate on playing some good football, not give away stupid free kicks. Some of them happen because they can't help it or because, in fact, they're you know, intended just to slow up the play, but some of those silly free kicks just drive you nuts and uh, I think some Swans fans tend to get a bit, um, you know, a bit 
uh, caught up in the fact that they're not getting free kicks. More importantly, they, the, the Swans just need to not give away the stupid ones. Yeah, agree. I agree, Heather. 100% agree. Mm. Yeah, and just on that, I think a lot of the time the, re the reason we give away those free kicks is because we're second to the ball. In a lot yeah, of yeah. cases, it's uh, very, very tricky situations where we actually come in second and we give them with um, silly incidents that shouldn't occur in the game. Yeah. What about you, um, Justin? What's your key point? I think uh, the Swans are going to have to go low and fast. So Liam Jones, he is a pretty good um, intercepting defender. He can, uh, especially when the ball is in the air and it's high and it's got a long, long hang time, he can get under the ball and he can spoil it quite well. Uh, he is really, really weak on the lead, uh, and it was shown a couple of weeks ago. I uh, can't remember which one it was, but um, on the cow or after the after the game that uh, one on Fox Footy, they really analysed it and pulled it apart and showed just where Liam Jones is um, really bad. And even Danny Frawley serenaded his uh, really poor performance. And um, it's worth a watch on YouTube if you ever get to it. That's not a word. It gets better, Chief. Not again. This one's Liam Jones and Tom McDonald again. This is six minutes later. They're not kicking the ball to you, Liam. Melbourne have got the ball. They're kicking it to Tom. That's right, number 25. That's right. Now, Chief. Spud. I've been practicing. I've got a, I've got a, I've got a ballad for, for Liam. Once. Twice, three times a bonehead, <laughs> and you are dumb as my dog's poo. <laughs> but I think if the Swans can go long and fast inside 50, they're going to really exploit Carlton's lack of experience and skill in defence, and they should really just rack up big numbers on the scoreboard. Yeah, well, I hope so, John Longmire is thinking about that and not actually d doing his usual plan of attack, which potentially is just to bomb it in because there's been well, too we don't much have bombing Reed. it in. We, yeah. we don't have Reed, so there's no plan B. No, yeah, well, <laughs> well there's been a lot of bombing it in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Heather, you're right. I actually, so based on your um, key point there, Justin, Swans are going to lose. Because all we do is bomb the ball. In. Stephen. Now, based on your key point, we'll lose. But I don't think we will. But based on that key point, because I would mm. say 60 to 70% of the time, we bomb the ball in long, even when we've got a small forward line. Yeah, and I've got to say that the, the person who is always looking to, to just chip it in nicely or just, you know, eyes up and have a look for someone running at the ball rather than someone sort of running back towards the goals is um, Jared McVeigh. He is always yeah. looking for someone that he can just dart the ball into. But, you know, there's a lot of other players whose just standard response is to, is to bomb it. So I really, really hope, um, yeah, that... that, that you know that they are listening to you somewhere, Justin, and that they're um, <laughs> <laughs> and, yep. and and that they're thinking about a few other plans. Oh, absolutely, hundred percent agree. Now, Stephen, would you like to give us your first prediction for the weekend? I would. So, I think my the, we're going to have the two best in and under players are going to be on display this week. That is JPK and Patrick Cripps. I believe that Cripps will have the most overall possessions in the game. But, I, but Kennedy, the king, the contested king, will come out on top. He will actually make sure that the Swans get over the line because he'll be in and under and he'll be tougher and harder in the clinches. Mm. Oh, I like it. I Good like prediction. It a lot. Mm, excellent. Well, my prediction, um, I'm just going to jump right in and, and give it, is that um, Liam Jones will be tonight not sleeping too well in his bed. He'll be tossing, he'll be turning, and he may well wake up screaming because he's he's going to be thinking, <laughs> he's subconsciously he's going to be thinking about his date with Buddy tomorrow night. And uh, even if Buddy isn't quite on top of his game, he is still a fairly intimidating fellow, and I suspect that he'll be, Liam Jones will be quite nervous as we speak. That's my prediction. I love it. I love it a lot, and I totally agree with you. He is going to have an absolute nightmare on and off the field, I think. <laughs> What's yours? Yeah, and worse comes to worse could come to um, Weedering could be having a nightmare as well if it <laughs> ends that, up being him on him. That would be the nice. The entire defence. <laughs> yeah, the entire defence, yeah. I think. They've got Sam Rowe there as well who can who they can throw on, and I don't think he's going to have a chance to stop Franklin if he's, if he's even 70% fit there. Yep. Good stuff. Now... My uh, my prediction is um, 
I, I'm going to go two players. Isaac Heaney is going to take a screamer. Mm. And uh, Jarek McVay is going to set up three goals. He's going to have three goal assists. I love that prediction. Love it. Absolutely love it. And did everyone see that there was a picture of uh, Isaac Heaney wearing not one jersey, but he was actually wearing two jerseys? Can you believe it? <laughs> the player who most often is semi-naked actually was wearing two Why? Well, interesting. <laughs> He was wearing. He was in training, and then they obviously had stuck on some training guernseys over the top. So they had one team against the other team. So he had a yellow jersey over the top. To he was in the yellow team. So there was a lovely photograph of him uh, taking it off, and yeah, the Swans having a bit of a laugh. Uh, and I bet you had a great time, didn't you, Heather? I loved it. It was. It was yeah, great. Yeah, I bet you did. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, we, we we know about Isaac Heaney, don't we, Justin? Yeah, 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 we do. We're not going to get into that, but uh, Heather, it, is Isaac Heaney your sure thing of the weekend? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, he is not. Okay, my, <laughs> I'm a bit distracted by that. Okay, so my, my sure thing of the weekend is that the Swans' dynamite defence is going to keep Carlton to below their average points this season. So... Carlton are averaging, if you can believe it, 65 points this season. I think wow. la- last se- last week against Fremantle, they scored something like 45 or 48, something wow. in the, something in the 40s. But they're averaging 65. So it's no wonder that they're 18th on the ladder because you just can't win games when you can't even score 11 goals over a whole match. So my prediction is that the Swans are going to keep them well under 65, um, which means that the Swans are going to win by a bloody long way. I love it. That is a really good sure thing. Now, Stephen, who is your most at stake? Well, I've actually got two, Justin, so I'm going to tell you. So my first one was actually not Swans related, and um, this was going to be my one until I actually saw the selections. But my first most at stake is actually Alan Richardson, the coach of the St Kilda Mm. Football Club. Mm. They play West Coast this week, and I actually believe if West Coast flogged them, he's going to be in some serious strife. Yeah. He's yeah. travelling poorly. The Saints should be a lot better than what they are. And I think the club is starting to lose patience with Alan Richardson. Yeah, I agree with that. We actually had that uh, on the show last week as well about Colton and St Kilda. So I like you followed it up. Now, what is your second most at stake? My second most at stake is not a single player from the Swans. It is actually the selection committee. Because I think Ooh. they've actually done something that is very, very silly by putting Gary Rowan back into the side. But not oh. just Gary Rowan. You look this. at it, Gary Rowan, you look at um, a few other selections. If he's getting in and he doesn't perform, as we've already talked about, the selection committee could be questioned quite severely because on um, AFL teams, when I was watching it on Fox Footy, about 15 minutes ago, they were actually questioning it as well as why Tom Harley came out last week and said he needed to go back to the reserves and actually find some form, and then they've just put him back in without actually playing a game. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, good point, good point. Now, for my doomsday scenario, Heather and Stephen, Mm. I think you guys might like this one. Doomsday is the Swans lose to Carlton at the SCG in the Margaret Ground. No. If they lose, oh, the people, it, there is going to be some lynching. I, I guarantee you there will be lynching. Oh, boy. And that will take us back to the dark days mm. of last season when they were five, six. five and zip, and then they managed to go and lose to the dreadful Carlton. The, the game they couldn't lose, they actually ended up losing. Poor old Callum yep. Mills got banged up by the naughty, nasty Carlton players. <laughs> yeah. we, all, we were all cringing. It was disgraceful. That would be a doomsday oh. scenario. It was it hard to be. watch, and, and if we lose, it is going to be an even harder to watch match. Mm. The worst part of it is, Justin and Heather, is one of my students come up to me today. He's going to the game this <laughs> weekend. He's a, he's a Carlton supporter, and he came up to me, and he's laid a bet down with me that for $2, it's only $2, but he's laid a bet down with me that Carlton will beat the Swans this weekend because he's going over to watch them and he has never, ever seen Carlton lose live. Oh, boy. Well, it's the first time for everything. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, look, uh, that's pretty much it for tonight's episode. Stephen and Heather, uh, 
Stephen and Heather, thank you so much for coming on again. It's been a treat having you guys on. Thanks for having me. Yep. Thanks, Justin. Thank you, Heather. Well, as always, guys, you can find us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram using the tag, the Swans blog, and the hashtags SwansCast and SwansCast Extra. We will be back on Monday night for the review of the match, and uh, hopefully it's going to be a good one. Otherwise, there's going to be a couple of grumpy people in the crowd, I think. Until next time, go Swans. Go Swans. Go the Swannies.